My guest today is Carol Watson, founder and president of Tangerine Watson. She's a 15-year veteran in the advertising industry, having spent time at Bates, the New York Times, Essence, and as the publisher of Vibe and Vibe Vixen. She is a single mother of a 17-year-old daughter, and welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, Carol. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Th thank you for having me. So I've asked my, my guests what a typical day looks like, and I've gotten a lot of answers that there is no typical day. Yeah. But what is your version of, we'll take out the word typical, but a, a day like today like for you? Well, since I have my own business, it's, I've been able to create um, a balance of all the things that I, I liked and enjoyed and take out the things that I didn't like when I was in corporate America. So my day is very, um, it can be one of two things. It's either very virtual, so I'm in my sweats at 6.30 in the morning talking to people throughout the day, um, whether it's candidates or clients or talking to my team that's around the country, and I'm in my sweats and may pick up my daughter or talk to her or handle different things throughout the day or I'm um, getting dressed up and spending the day in the city meeting with clients um, at in, in a industry events and doing um, uh, candidate meetings and um, entertaining people in the evening so I can live in, in two completely different worlds throughout the week. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like now to have your own company versus what it was before when you were in the corporate world? Um, what I'm very grateful for, and it's my sixth year having my own business, and I, I kind of fell into it by default. It wasn't really a plan. The plan was to do that after she had left and when I was an empty nester. Um, but it was an opportunity that came that was presented to me. So I was very fortunate for that. And what I realized is how much better it is to have more control and more flexibility in my schedule and how breaking my day up and having the opportunity to feel guilt-free about having to take care of things during the day and happily doing work at night on the weekend really um, reduced a lot of stress and anxiety, especially coming from a place where I was managing a large team around the country. Well, you touched on something that I think is so key, which is you said guilt-free. Mm -hmm. And I, I speak to a lot of my friends, mm -hmm. and they're always feeling guilty because they, they're somewhere they should have, they feel they should have been or something they should have been doing, and they're always like, well, I can't be in two places at the same time. What advice do you have for working women who are faced with that? I mean, one of the things that uh, quotes that can't, comes up a lot when it comes to working women is that you can't have it all at one time. Um, so I'm a big believer in that and um, also a big believer in having uh, uh, patience with ourselves and forgiving ourselves for doing, trying to do everything we're trying to do and not being able to get it in. So I think it's important to find um, joy in the in the things that drive you and that give you have you pass give you passion um, and also finding somebody else that you can either pay <laughs> or barter <laughs> services for for the things that you don't like so that you're trying to fill up your life with the things that bring you joy whether it's through work or mm -hmm. through your personal life that that's a very good tip do you have any other insights for a woman who's trying to balance the different aspects of her life um, well, I think that the important thing is to have a village, have a community. I talk to a lot of young mothers and they talk about how their husbands are really busy and they don't have other people in their circle. They may not have a family in their area. And growing up without a family nearby and with as a single parent, um, it was natural for me to surround myself with, self with other parents and other mothers, whether they are married or not, that had kids that were the same age. And over the course of the 17 years that I've um, raised my daughter, it's been very gratifying and I've been very um, fortunate to be able to exchange um, services and, and, and get the support that I need. So if I'm going out on a business trip, I now have you know, what I call my um, Simone patrol. So I have um, a bunch of friends that will kind of make sure that everything is going well um, when my daughter's at home and I'm, I'm away. So it's important whether you're married or not, to have a group of, of friends that also um, can support each other um, in, in, in every aspect of, of building your career. Absolutely. So you're a great role model for your daughter. Do you have any, any mistakes that you made looking back that you can, you know, when she comes to you that you can tell her or somebody else, look, don't bother doing this because this, this part didn't work. <laughs> 
Well, the concept of control, I think um, a lot of women <clears throat> want to feel like they have control over um, what, you know, everything that goes on and, and what the path uh, your child takes. Um, and every child is different. Um, what I learned is to um, give up the concept of control and really kind of think about managing the path so that um, you're able to have the child flourish in the path that was destined for them. So trying to control everything really is a source of, of guilt and worry um, that I see um, other mothers kind of struggling with that I, it's a practice that you have to kind of get used to. It's nothing that you ever achieve, <laughs> but it's a, it's a pursuit of just managing versus trying to control. One of the things I didn't mention when I was introducing you is that you're the incoming president of ANI. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. I'm very excited. It's, it's a, it's a, you have 1,600 members, right? Yes. We're actually, we have a goal this year. is our 100th anniversary. So our goal is to have 2,012 members for 2012 by October. So now we're, we're close to 1,700, and we're kind of aggressively moving that forward. We're very excited about this new generation of young women working for a lot of the small digital firms that we may not have even heard of that are really excited about having a way to have a sense of community um, and the need to be mentored. Um, that hasn't changed as a new generation comes up and the older, um, more successful or career transitioning women woman is still looking for networking in a way to not only give back but to explore other career avenues. So it's a great association. What are some of the things that ANI offers to their members? Well, the mentoring program. I mean, mm -hmm. we do a lot of uh, surveys of our, of our members, and one of the things they ask for is more mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a very uh, formal mentoring process that people are really thrilled about. Um, just having professional development and having a, a network of community um, and also um, holding events where women are celebrated. Um, one of the big events that um, was a, a great new idea that we came up with is called Change in the Game. And we came up with it about four or five years ago and we really wanted to show women throughout the country, throughout the industry that were um, making a change um, in the industry and, and being innovators, being unapologetic, and really um, blazing a new trail. So it's been a very successful um, new uh, platform for us to really show women a different way to go about looking at things that were not just the traditional amazingly successful few women that are out there, but some women that you may not have heard of. So we wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. But we are bringing out a, a new logo. We have a new website. So um, we're really looking at um, ways to expand on it throughout the country because there's a lot of interest now with digital age for getting more content, getting more information, and having um, a network and satellite of uh, chapters around the country. So it's a very pivotal time in the organization. Chapters around the country, but ANI does stand for Advertising Women of yes. New York, right? So the new logo will just say AWNY. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And if you want to learn more about it, you it's ani.org. Ani.org. Okay, that, that, uh, so check it out because how many more members did you say you needed? Just a few hundred. <laughs> okay. We check can it do out. it by October. Please join. <laughs> Please join. Please join. It seems to me that there are a lot of women in advertising that get to a certain level and then there aren't a lot of women right at the top. Am I right? And if I am right, why is that? Yeah, there's. I've been doing some moderating of panels, and there's a, there's now a three percent conference that's going on about the three percent of women in creative, and now they're doing a conference to figure out how to get more women in creative. Is eighty percent of the perching purchasing power coming from women, it is a struggle still not to see as many women moving to the top. And what they've seen is that it comes from a number of different places. One is that a lot of women just opt out. Mm -hmm. because of the work hours and, and the travel schedule. Um, one of the things that we've seen um, at ANI, for example, is that when you see women being awarded, um, oftentimes the woman that's being awarded is either the primary career person in the household or they have um, some, or they're childless. Mm -hmm. So um, how to create role models that um, have, have it all and, and can we have it all is really the question because um, it's, it's still not where it should be. Can we have it all? Not all at the same time. <laughs> I think we have to pick and choose. I mean, you, every once in a while, I know of amazing women that do seem to have it all, but it's, it's, it's not the norm. 
Um, so, you know, picking and choosing what, you know, at what point in your phase in your life you will want to have kids or you will want to have a career or you want to pick and choose that balance is, is really key. And I think that's where a lot of younger women just say to themselves, this, this seems overwhelming mm -hmm. to me. I'm not quite sure you know how to do it all. Do you think for yourself in your own career path, I know you were, you were at Bates, as I mentioned, and then you were in the media business for a while. How do you think being a woman affected your career? Um, I think uh, there were, I felt like there were uh, some amazing role models. Um, I was at the New York Times for quite a while, and they're amazing women that um, have led that um, publication mm -hmm. for quite a while. So I felt that there were great role models as women. I think the challenge was more around being a wife and a mother in those roles and, and how to balance, balance those perspectives um, to feel like you were giving time to all those other aspects of yourself. Um, but depending on your personality, I always had a strong personality. So being a woman, I felt, um, was a, a standout. It was easier to stand out. It was easier to be noticed as a tall black woman. You know, I'm always heard. So that was always a, a great benefit. So for these younger women that are coming into the workforce and are looking at somebody like you that's been able to have this phenomenal career juggling all these different things, and they come to you and they say, how should I do it? How can I do it? <laughs> What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time. Uh, they say wins are th through inches. Um, but I think the first thing is to really establish what your value is and really have a really great self-awareness of what your strengths are and what value you can bring to a company. And work hard. Make sure that you show your value. And once you have your value established, whether it's in the industry or the company, then it's a lot easier to ask for the flexibility that you want. Um, very often women don't raise their hand, you know, so to ask for um, the assignments, don't be afraid to ask for the assignments and ask for the flexibility that you want and blaze your own trail. Don't be afraid to do that. It's not necessarily what's been done before, but, you know, feel confident enough to, you know, move and, 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 and go in the way that works best for you. As opposed to apologizing for, I can't be here then, or I can't exactly. do this right then. Yes. It's amazing how much companies are open, mm -hmm. um, but we kind of take it upon ourselves to feel like, oh, you know, they're going to look badly on us. But once you establish your value and you understand what you're bringing to the company and they understand what your value is to them, women would be surprised how much flexibility um, there is. And if there isn't, it's a competitive world. So go somewhere where they kind of value what you bring. That's very, very good advice. So let me ask you a question. If you had the chance now, or if you were looking at leaving the corporate world now, and you said you had an unexpected um, chance to do something, mm -hmm. would you do it? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm in the talent business. So um, what I recommend to people is, is um, if they need a shift, if they want a shift, I think it's always important to um, do what you're passionate about. Um, you know, one of the big successes for women is really starting their own business and, and blazing their own um, trail and crafting the life that works for them. Um, I think people shouldn't be afraid to do that. Um, even if you do it for a few years and come back and just as so long as you're growing and you're developing in your own way, I think it's um, you shouldn't be afraid um, to pursue um, new paths. And I think that's one of the things about that women need to understand that their careers can evolve mm -hmm. and their lives can evolve as their kids change ages, as different things happen. I mean, is that really what you found too? Yeah, I definitely found that. Um, I think opening up and um, the opportunity to um, explore different areas, you know, even if you're going to another country, I've seen people, you know, really um, take assignments around the world um, at, at a level of adventure and come back and they're much more expanded, they're a lot more competitive, they're a lot more desirable um, as talent. So there's there are a lot of different ways to grow and develop. So people should be um, open to a variety of infinite um, possibilities for them. What's the funniest thing that happened to you over the years as you were trying to balance, you know, your everyday life and work? Any anything stand out? Well, you know, it's and when I was thinking about. Um you know, things that were funny. I, I was thinking about all the things that were about juggling. You know, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time juggling and, you know, every once in a while, 
you'll realize you're juggling so many different things that something is going to fall. Um, and I found as, as a source of peace for myself that, you know, it's really hilarious because I have to remember that we're totally imperfect and our goal is not to be perfect and to just laugh at the things that we try to control and manage and all the juggling is just a reminder of our humanity. Well, I think that's probably a terrific place to end. Have a sense of humor. Have a sense of humor. Very important. <laughs> it was wonderful to get to talk to you. Well, thank thank you, you so much for joining me. It was my pleasure. Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> and thank you for listening and joining us. Please join me again for another episode of Perspectives with Katie Kempner. <laughs>